Um, talking of commissioning and, dis and imagining that there is some mysterious, dark, secret art associated with commissioning is, I think, to miss the point. Most general practices, and indeed many of those who uh, work alongside general practice, are already in many ways commissioning. They're making the decisions that are determining the shape of services in their area. They're just not doing it alongside the people who are then responsible for um, placing the contracts or negotiating the contracts or monitoring the contracts or monitoring the resources as they flow as a consequence of those clinical decisions. So my point about bringing the two things together is absolutely critical. And bringing the two things, management of resources and management of clinical care together, means we are going to have to fuse, as Martin said, people who in the NHS are responsible for management and those in, in the NHS who are responsible for clinical care. It will be true in hospitals, it will be true in the community. You know, general practice, doctors, nurses, other health professionals, should be thinking increasingly about how they can combine their responsibilities and make sure that the management of resources matches the way in which they want to design care for patients. Same way in foundation trusts and many of the NHS trusts, I know people are already looking at things like service line reporting and saying, how can we give those people who are responsible for the management of care of patients a much stronger sense of the resources they receive and we receive and the way in which we use them in order to improve the service that we deliver. There's nothing strange about this. But I do think you know, that one of the things that I find most depressing is the idea that somehow um, the reforms are designed to fragment the service. On the contrary, what we have to do is to enable the service to be more integrated in the future than it's been in the past. It's true of UCL Partners and Academic Health Sciences Partnership. It's looking beyond the walls, it's going, you know, it's going extra mural, beyond the walls of hospital care. I think pretty much hospitals right across the country should increasingly be thinking of themselves not as hospital trusts, but as healthcare trusts. That are thinking about healthcare provision in a more integrated, more networked fashion. And there's nothing in our reforms that will stop that happening, and many things that should help it happen. Because actually, when you start to design um, services from a clinical point of view in order to, to drive improvement in outcomes. Very often it's the relationship between clinicians in the community and clinicians in hospital that best make that happen. I remember the National Primary Care Development Centre looked at care closer to home pilots to see what best met the combined objectives of quality and access. It was actually the relationship between general practice and hospital specialists that was most likely to make that happen. We just need to make sure that some of the um, some of the systems, not least the tariff system, bec through the introduction of things like year of care pathways and uh, year of care budgets and care bundle tariffs, enables those who are commissioning to commission for the service they want, enables the public, as, as patients or care users, to get the more integrated service that they want. Now, I think once you've done all those things, from the clinical point of view, leadership comes naturally to the fore because people who are clinical leaders are working within what they would regard as their sphere of greatest experience and expertise, and putting management alongside them to enable it to happen. 